This isn't it, is it? You can't lie to me. No, this won't be my last week. This won't be your last no, week? No, no. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. 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 Start two minutes early. That'd be one for the books, right? Yeah. No, not the dream crusher. <laughs> you don't want to go until five. You start later. <laughs> really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> it can be late, but not early. Learn something new every day. That's okay. I'm always late. I'm always early. I just don't know. Why can't I click me? Because you don't go to bed. Just about. No, I don't ever go. That's the problem. You never know when to quit. You can call me. That's what it is. Five or six, I might. You've always got something you want to do. I can't just stop shit. Boy, you know, I'm getting up. That's when you're getting up. So I know. You can go on there and I see you're still wound up. I'm like, never mind. Especially I'm researching what I'm researching. Yeah, that's so I'm like a little bit there on the tax returns. I can tell you about this other little scam they've got going. 6.30, are you ready to No, no, it's not so good. It's right there. Yeah. It's really good. Time. Well, let's wait a minute to be late. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I knew I'd love you being here. Okay, you ready? It looks like we have a quorum established, and I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Are there any additions, deletions, corrections to the agenda? Anybody? Everybody? Good to go? Good to go. Okay, is there a motion regarding the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you very much. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Very good. How about the minutes? Any additions, deletions, corrections to the minutes? I'll move the approval of the minutes. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. Very good. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Very good. Yeah, we've done five minutes. <laughs> okay. Under communications and announcements, 4A. Sure, can you just make sure that your microphone is on? Of course. Thank you so much. It looks like the light's off, but it was aimed in the wrong direction. The right time, but. That's the story of my life. Okay. Is that better? No, it is not. She said no. Is that not better? Yeah. Oh, it's good. Oh, now it's just happening. Oh, my goodness. Okay. 
So I don't have to shout. You use my mom's voice. <laughs> All right, advisory board update from Miss Amanda Radigan starting tonight. Updates regarding advisory boards. You know something for us, Miss Amanda? Yes, ma'am, thank you so much. Um, I do see a couple of new faces here. If I haven't met you yet, yeah, my name is Amanda Radigan. I am the Indian Swimming Director. Um, I will make myself available for the meetings coming forward as you know we are losing my in the near future. So you will see more of him, more of me and less of him, unfortunately. We will, we will all miss him. Um, a couple of more formal updates. Um, first, as you may know, the city as a whole uses notice agenda currently to publish agendas. This board has been um, operating in a very manual way um, with paper agendas. That is changing. So we will be adopting PEAK citywide for the city commission and all of the advisory boards, including us. Um, that is targeted to go live in May. So for our next meeting, we will be using PEAK. Um, at some point, uh, you, will be, uh, you will get an email from either the clerk's office or from us regarding training. Um, it should be as simple as clicking the link to view the agenda and clicking around that agenda to view the items, um, but you will get training on that in the near future. Uh, the next item we have is the visitor center. We did get a couple of uh, new boards regarding that. Um, they are targeting to go live in six months and are still looking for volunteers to work at that, uh, that center. So if anyone's interested, please you can reach out to me or to Catherine from Joe's. Um, and we also learned that they are looking to purchase kiosks um, in, in order to show information digitally. We do think that it will include paper information too, so we will talk about that at some point uh, as an update to the overall uh, obligations from this board. So it will be included in the visitor center. And that's all I have. You can move forward to the next item unless you guys have any questions. Questions? No? Okay, thank you, Lynn. I have a quick question. Oh, of course. Do you know when the visitor center will be open? They're targeting six months. So Okay, so before it was May or June, but now it's going to be probably like September or something? Yeah, I believe September, October is what they're targeting for. Thank you. Is it still located in the City Hall lobby? It is. In the, the elbow over there? It is located, so at the main entrance when you come in, it's actually taking apart one of the conference rooms that was in there, and they, they did it in there. So in that room, they're going to be including kiosks, paper publications, and there'll be a desk there. Okay. Any more questions? No? Thank you very much. Okay. Item 4B is website migration. Is that who's? Oh, Craig. Good, Craig. Oh, you call her. Craig speaks. Oh, right. <laughs> I was trying to get the picture a little bit. Oh. No, that's okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Wait for you to load it. Perfect. All right, everybody. We got some good news to share with all of you. We have a good working draft of the website and it is live. Um, so we're really excited to share that with you and we would uh, like some of your feedback as well. So maybe navigate to it and show you how to access the new historic preservation website. So I'll go to the city's webpage. And then at the top of the page, we hit or hover over business. And then we can see his, his historic preservation. It's listed within that tab if I can keep it open. Yeah. It's a little sensitive, so I have to go a little slow. There we go. All right, and here's the landing page for the historic preservation website. As you can see, we have a nice banner at the top with some of our historic images. And we have a statement at the top of the website um, with preserving our legacy. And then we have two images. They are buttons. We can click on Learn More for recent designations and historic properties, which will show us the map. So I'll click on to the recent designation. Once we click on that, we can see the property that we will be voting on tonight um, that we are anticipating to be designated. And what we will do is show an image of the property and a brief summary of the property and its history, including its location. So at the bottom of this page, you'll see a statement of 
significant to other properties. So let me hit the back button right here, and then I'll show you all the historic properties map. So again, click on learn more. That'll be a little a little moment for it to load. Okay, so what we have here are all of the properties. They are either um, both nationally and locally registered, which is identified by this yellow icon. Um, we have identified some of those significant sites that have been demolished as well. Locally registered only, and then the green icon are those that are not registered. So one thing about this bar on the side, we can click on to those that we would like to see, and I'll deactivate those that we don't want to see. Excuse me. Go ahead. Um, this one? Mm -hmm. um, the question or the. Get on now? Okay. Um, I guess the question or the statement doesn't necessarily deal with this, but it deals with individuals that may have a handicap. Mm -hmm. um, Myself, I have a hearing handicap, so I can't do this. Okay. Do you I can't know? turn around and so, do that, so I have to come up here, or if there's some way it can be on the screen here, because I can't. Is it not on your No, the big one. No. No, no, that's fine. I'm just letting you know that I can't turn around and look at that. Right. There's a reason for that. Uh, uh, the big monitor. It went on about two or three minutes ago. Oh, oh. And we're on. Yeah. Hmm. I couldn't log on to the live mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing that up. No, it's just here. Let's don't talk about the microphone. Do that. That's fine. I shouldn't do that. That's fine. Can you hear us from the microphone? Yeah, I can hear you talking. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no. there's nothing on. They all went to sleep. <laughs> but you can go on. I just, as long as I can yeah. see it like that, yeah. But, you know. Um, we can move it onto you. This is it when you get home. Yeah, that's, that's, I just wanted you to know that so people that watch it, what you can add it. Sometimes it can have a way to get it. Can I have a TV's on mic? Is there a way to get it on? Can I have a TV's mic? Is that what that is? Can I have a <laughs> Did their screen show up? No, their screen. Um, is do you have any knees that have on the access to the Is it also blank? Like? I don't know. It's, well, you mean what he's doing? The, I yeah, he's got the agenda. Oh, that's the agenda. Oh, it's not like a computer. Okay, so do you. Just be like, come on. So do you want a website access to the yeah. website? What he's, what he's doing. doing. That's what I want. Okay, so I can call him now. Okay, you will rearrange. Okay, well, we got it. All right, so you want to. No, you can do that. You can do that. Yeah. It's going to be difficult. I mean, it's going to be difficult. It's going to have to be difficult. It's going to have to be difficult. Okay, that's good. That's good. Beer. I see that. All right, thank you for that. Okay, let's go back to the beginning really quickly. So the location of the website is under the business tab at the top, and it'll be down toward the bottom, historic preservation. We click on that, and it'll load up our website. And this is the landing page for the website. Um, what I mentioned earlier, we have some of the historic images at the top of the website. And then the statement about preserving our legacy for historic preservation. And here are the buttons for the recent designations and the historic properties map. So what I showed earlier was the recent designation. If you click on learn more, it will load that page. Once the page is loaded, we can see the property that we are anticipating to be designated tonight. So it will live on this page. And this page will be updated as we receive more um, designations in the future. So maybe this will move further down the road so the recent designations are top and front and center. And at the bottom of this page, we will see a statement of significance about the property. 
but all of the relevant information, important information, that, for example, the location of the legal description is located underneath the name. And I'll just hit the back button to go back to the main page and go back to the historic property map that I was showing earlier. Take a little moment to load it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so all the icons that you see on the map, they are actually located in this legend here with the explanation. So the icon with the yellow um, represents properties that are both nationally and locally registered. The red icon are properties that have been demolished. The blue icon are properties that are locally registered. And the green icon are properties that are not currently registered but still have significance. So if I click on one of these, it'll deselect all of the rest and it'll draw your attention just to those properties that are both um, nationally and locally registered. So I'll just click over on one of those. If I can hit the zoom button on the side here to get in, get in a little bit closer. Okay, so once I clicked onto that icon, you can see the site information came up, including the address, um, the site name, the architectural style, and the status. And then if I zoom, um, scroll down a bit, we get a picture of the property as well or a few pictures, it just depends on what we have in our library. I'll close that out. And as you can see, I can highlight demolish and then click back on the one on the top to deselect it. So it's pretty interactive. And I'll just go back to the main page here. We scroll down a little bit further, we have another statement about the historic preservation program. And below that, we have a section where our board members, we can have your image there. Um, this is something that we would like to get from all of you. We do have Bernard Wright just as an example right now, but everyone, if you can send us your images, that will be perfect. And then right underneath the board member section, we have a link to the city clerk's page for the application to become a part of the board. I click on that it'll load any new page. Okay. As you can see, it is a fillable application. Oh, sweet. All right, and I'll go back to our historic page. We have some frequently asked questions, and this is by no means complete yet. So what we have here are some terms and definitions that we got from currently within the city's code. And we do have a hyperlink to the city's code as well at the top. So terms and definitions, if I click that, it goes to our code library. And it'll load that, I'll go back to our page. And once I click on terms and definitions again, it disappears, and we can then click on to any of the other two that we have right now. So we have the review criteria and codes, and we also have the designation process. So now the final bar I'd like to talk about is the sidebar. And so on the sidebar, currently we are within the Points and Beaches Historic Preservation page. We do have a link to the library archive. Then this is the city library archive. Here we have a lot of different collections and images. We also have a link to the plaque program. And this page, this is another page that can be um, built out a little bit more with more information. But this is just to give you an idea of what it can look like. And then we have some links to external pages, such as the Palm Beach Historical Society. Let 
now load up to the page for the probably the third will be right here. And then as well as the Florida Division of Historical Resources. So that's where we're at right now with the website. Um, if you'd like to hear your thoughts. And again, this is still in the, the, the draft form, but it is currently live. I'll get you the links to the uh, Wharton Historical Society and uh, also our YouTube channel, which has uh, movies of all of our programs. Okay, that sounds great. That'd be cool. Yeah. Did you do this? So we did it in um, coordination with our IT department. Mm -hmm. So they they really helped to put this together and move it along. And as well, Cheyenne worked with me a lot on this as well. And my, so it was a team effort. I'm going to be writing my canal. Of course, absolutely. It's, a, it's very good. I like it. I just have one other question, though. Um, why are we in your business and not in your government? Um, I can answer that one. Actually, the um, city IT department is um, working with to migrate the entire city website to a different platform. Right now, they are in the stage to trend, you know, migrate the entire. So this is way that is set up currently, and then the IT department has very limitation what they can have the different um, categories or different um, landforms. So um, eventually it will be, you know, we will have a different city website and it's going to be a little more um, categorized. It depends on the department. And obviously it's going to be under um, separate and then possibly under development services and then along with the other divisions. So that's the future plan, but for now, this is what the IT can do based on the current platform. And, and just to note that all of the development services divisions are currently under business, so it's only if we are building um, Energy Edge, uh, all, of, all of the planning and zoning items and development items are under business currently. Oh, you mean the, their advisory boards? Or? No, so all, all everything that we do, so the BTRs, the building divisions, all the services, the economic development, all of the things that fall under the purview of development services is under business. I, I, we don't have a, a great answer as to why, but like Jane said, uh, they are looking to restructure the website as a whole um, to make it make more sense. So it's more intuitive to go find because I agree. I'm looking for store preservation or even for zoning. I don't think a resident would go to business for, it, for those. Well, those are two quasi judicial boards <laughs> that we should be in the government. But I don't get it. Um, I don't know if you will have it, believe me. Yeah. Uh, I want to emphasize what Craig says. We want, um, I think the photos will be great to add it to the website. So if you share your images, the photos, you know, it's not like a, we are requiring it, but it will be nice to have your images and so we can place on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Any more questions, comments? I have some questions. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. No. Uh, yeah, do the mic. Okay. Uh, no, no. All right. Okay. Um, thank you for clarifying about the business. That was one of my questions too. Um, the other one is you mentioned that uh, there are, are on that map historically significant but not registered properties. Can you tell me how they were designated? Who decided what were historically significant but not registered? And also, would you be willing for us to give you suggestions of some as well? Yeah, so this is, I would call it, an update to the 1996 um, historic site survey. So what this map shows is everything that was um, that was found at that time to be historically significant and we updated it. So anything that was on that list that was demolished is represented. Anything that was on that list and not designated yet is on the list shown that way, and anything that has been designated is shown as designated. So there has been no update, no further update from the 1996 survey. Am I answering your question? I think so. Because um, I, I know of some properties that are now historic that weren't 1996. And yes. so I'm just wondering how we get those also designated somewhere on this map. 
you know, one of the things that um, I think that we will add to the agenda for the next meeting, uh, there's two items that I'm going to talk to the one about, is first an annual work plan, um, things that you would like to get done in the next fiscal year that we would have to budget for, an updated survey, a true updated survey would be something that would go on a work plan that the city would need to request financing for. Um, so that would be how we do it. It would be, a, you know, either within a certain scope or within a whole city, a survey that's done that brings everything that was not on the 1996 survey that could be historically significant onto that survey, and then this would be updated based on that also. Wonderful. That sounds fantastic. Um, and then my last question is has to do with um, could we possibly put links to one history um, somewhere on there down the road, like just some books on on Wooden Beach history or um, other areas that maybe people might want to click into. You have the Palm Beach Historical Society, which I think is good, but there may be, you know, some ways that people want to read more about like history, where would they go kind of book? Absolutely. So, if you guys have any recommendations of any information that you would like on this, uh, on this page, please just send it to us. We'll be happy to review it and add it. Great, thanks. If you have additional houses you'd like to add to the list. Okay. No, any more comments, questions? No one? Michael, you're thinking too long. It's clicking. It's <laughs> clicking. <laughs> okay, very good. I like it very much. You, you will, you know, be getting some more input, as always. Okay? Thank you. Everybody make a list of stuff that you'd like to add to it. Um, you know, we can hand it over to you. Uh, I mean, then I guess, Craig, you're taking the lead in this? We just promoted you, kid. Why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> those statements, those significance are wonderful. And I hope that you're putting them on there. That really helps people get into the actual background to these properties. Well, we might have to look at some of those paragraphs and see if, if we'd like to tweak them a little, update them, and uh, add, add our input as usual. Okay, very good. And anything else? Should we move on? Okay. That takes us to item 4C. The Andrews House, and I see we have a visitor tonight. I'm kind of guessing that the visitors hear about this. Well, the item is actually an update from staff. Uh, we just wanted to inform the board that we did um, get a, um, a contract with um, Historica um, to do the designation report for the site. Um, we Warren, who I think you all have worked with before, will be helping us with this designation report. He is in contact with the property owners um, and the property management to hopefully get access to the house to start that designation report. Um, I'm not sure if you can allow public comment, but since someone's here, and you, if you are excited to hear I'd love to hear what he has to say. You want to talk to us, Brad? You know, I'm never short of words. <laughs> Uh, Bradley Miller with Urban Design Studio, and I, I do represent the property owner. Um, I'm really here to, uh, the staff reached out after your last meeting and, and talked to us about um, the, the idea of, of a designation here. Uh, where we're at with the, the project, uh, you may know that the same owner owns on the north side of Ocean Avenue as they do on the south side. And currently we're working on uh, going through an application process right now to get the north side underway and under construction. So that's been our focus. Um, the approvals that are in place for, the, for the, the south parcel that has the Andrews House incorporated in it, it does, it still has the, the house designated on the approved site plan as one, one residential unit. Um, when I represented that, that was in 2017, uh, we had all kinds of discussions about what to do, what not to do uh, with, with, with the house, and it's, it's still going. So um, although it's taken, taken a hiatus here of, of time while we focus on the North Parcel. So I really uh, came tonight at the suggestion of staff to listen in and, and add where I can help. Cool, I'm glad you're here. Thanks for having me. Thank you for the update. Um, I have to share with you guys, Ben 
shared with me a grant opportunity. The, the great big special, uh, who, who was that from? The state? Yes. The state historic preservation? They're offering a, a matching grant program, $500,000. If we could come up with five, another $500,000, and one of the categories that would qualify is acquisition. If we could um, find a place to put the Andrews House, perhaps we could find a way to apply for that grant money and use a million dollars to saving the Andrews House and putting it somewhere in a more prominent location. Yeah, we might also want to look at some existing CRA-owned properties in the area that might be that might work also. Um, I know that they are in full ownership of what's known as the Cottage District now, so that would be a location. They have a few in the Hard Boyan area that might work also. Uh, so I'm happy to, to take a look at that. Um, we'll, we'll forward that information to you. That's what I thought, gee, with a million dollars, we could maybe do actually something. Um, I don't know who owns the old Gables property next door to Magnuson. It's a doctor, somebody that owns that. Yeah. I don't know how much money he wants for that property, but that would be a really fun place to put it. Yes, it would. Right there, and it would make a really swell visitor center. Yeah, and we have an excellent idea. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, I, I don't um, know yet, I'm sure we'll learn one through this information report, the quality of the interior, how, what would be needed to kind of uh, repurpose the building into something, but a visitor center is very low impact, so as long as it's safe, we um, have to run through the building official's office. But um, yeah, that's. Quite an idea. Always cooking. <laughs> Always cooking. I mean, what year, uh, Mr. Katz redid the interior of the Andrew Zone many years ago? Does anybody remember what year that would have been? I'm just curious. I, I don't know. Are you sure it was Katz or was it Mr. Delmeda? Katz? We can look through current records and uh, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look bad. I'm hoping that it's in pretty good condition because it's state county fine in there, so there's a little bit resistant to termites and stuff. Have you been in, Brendan, in your house? <laughs> it's been a few years ago when uh, Arthur Delmeda was, was the owner, they did go in. Uh, the part I remember is I had to duck down quite a bit going up the stairs to the second floor. So uh, people in those years were a little shorter than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are pretty tall. You are pretty tall. But overall, it was in good condition. Yeah, it, it was uh, the, the things that I do remember in it when, it, when this, it was Mr. Katz that I think had like the electrical upgrade. There was a little um, window that he took out the, it, you guys will know the terminology better. The, the school and the and the and the lines that were take, being taken out when they upgraded it. He left a section out of in there and then did a, a plexiglass window in the wall so you could see it. I thought that was pretty cool. And then um, under the stairs, you could see handwritten pencil of like notes from the contractor. Uh, little nuances like that were were, were great. Yeah, in the conversations, really more with uh, Mr. Delmeda than Mr. Matos uh, now. Um, they, you know, there's, there's talk of incorporating it into the project as as an amenity for residents, or uh, a coffee house, or moving it, or not moving it, and so it, it really did go all over the place. But it's, uh, it, I think it's it's actually better on the inside than it is on the outside. Do you think the present owner would object to us putting it on the local register? Well, they quickly wrote down half a million dollars. Um, I, I think the I think he's open to continue having the discussions because he's he's not sure exactly what to do with it either. Yeah. And, and we, uh, uh, Barbara, and I, I had the same thoughts. I think it's a, unless it's a doctor's call. I represented him at one point in time, next to Magnuson House. Um, a place like that where you already have one house, you're close to City Hall, I, that's my own personal. It would be a, a step towards what our 
the citizen vision was in Prosha. Every yeah. time we get somebody together, it's like, we want cottages of little shops down the avenue that people would want to come and visit. The other thing that I've thought about is the location where it's at now. I bet there's a very small percentage of people in town that even know it's there because it's hard to get to, and even when you have directions, it's hard to get to. Yeah. I know that it's there. Nobody knows it's there. Um, and then you have the railroad that right next door, but I'm sure the vibration is it's not helping the situation. Oh, for sure. Now, that 500000 is a matching grant. We're going to have to get the city or somebody to point it, point it, point it up the other 500000 Amanda told me that she's playing lottery every week. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, let's let's do something. I, and I, I will say, for Manny, uh, um, the the owner now, he was planning on attending, and he had something come up this afternoon, last minute. So oh, no, no worries. We're so glad to have you. You get me. I was coming anyway, but uh, you can only get me. Well, maybe come every time. Watch out. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any more comments, questions? On the Andersons. So it's good news that we've hired Warren to come and, and uh, work on that. Good. Good. I'm excited. So, you have a question, I guess. Um, I do remember that they want cottages down ocean. Um, but when you talk about moving houses, is there a designated area where we want those type of houses to be? Uh, like if the Andrews house, another house, another house. We want to put them in a central location for like the store grow. Is that the idea of uh, and moving it or just moving it to where it's useful? Well, I don't know. I kind of think it would be useful on our stand, but we kind of have to move it to something that we own, that the city owns. Well, I was saying if we move that area, we're going to move others to it. Well, oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's that's fine with me. You put one here, one there, one there. That's kind of all over. But if you kind of get them in a central location and say this is our historic houses, we move them to the central areas. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I think that. <laughs> I believe the CRA though has plans for the cottage district. <laughs> I don't know if they narrowed it down to what they want to do, but they want to do something over there. Yeah. Okay, okay. Any more about Anders? No. Okay, good. Let's see what's next. Um, this was on the table. Is there a motion to remove it from the table, please? It has to be somewhere put it on the table. Yeah, I know. You can make it from the table if you want. Well, so is that the only way for us to discuss? I think I'll take it off. Okay. There you go. Is there a second? Tom, Tom seconded it or Michael? Either way. Thank you, Ben. Okay, okay. Uh, all in favor? Right. Any opposed? Okay, it's off the table. All right, this uh, we pretty much discussed it um, at our last meeting, and we didn't have a quorum because Victor had to recuse himself because it's his it's his grandma's house. Yep. We don't have to make him get off of the day as do we? Okay, good. Okay. No secrets. <laughs> Yeah, so he's, he's signed a paper so that he has officially recused himself. Michael, I see you're, you're talking to us. Ooh. Good evening, Mike from Planning with the Plan Division. Um, no, just here to answer any questions you may have. I would at least, even though there really isn't an audience here for this item, I would like to, for the minutes, refer us back to the March 7th meeting of this board when more complete presentations were made. Great contributions were provided by family members of the property, including our your board member, Mr. Lopez, um, which is very good and helpful. Uh, I went at a separate report I presented explained some of the nuts and bolts and, and highlights of the designation report that was done by the city's consultant uh, for the task. Um, I also like to use opportunities like this, as I have few, some few final meetings to do so, uh, for the board in this process. Um, and, and, and I think I Try to describe a little bit in contrast to the, the prior uh, designation that we, we reviewed and approved. Really different um, styles of architecture, um, different representations of the city's history, and I think they're really excellent examples of both. And this one really helped us focus a little bit more on, on some events, association of the times, 
And, and I was pointing out to page 18, I think it's a good summary of some of the criteria that she used in descriptions of criteria for evaluating the property and site of historic significance. And some of the key words, the two biggest categories keep in mind are significance and integrity. Now, significance is determined by architecture, by well-known individual or an event um, <clears throat> in the community. And one or more of those could apply that would justify its designation. And then it goes into integrity. Most of it has to do with the architecture and condition of the property, in, in, in addition to association of something relevant at the times. And what I kind of tried to point out before was the fact that um, this property being part of historic subdivisions, and one of the subdivisions of the neighborhood was actually um, ancestors of this property. And it was also pointed out that this family has owned property in the city, in this area, in, in these historic subdivisions since the late 1800s. Very significant. That helps us understand some association of the times. Also, this property was part and it really is kind of an icon, if you will, to uh, the significant era of segregation that was occurring. And it really, I remember the first time I read the ordinance, uh, which segregated whites and blacks in the city, it kind of gave you a chill, almost like it's brought it home, although it's not something new to us, uh, but actually real, read it in such association of, of where we live, where I live, where I have trained as, and grown up as a, as a planner and a resident here in the area. Anyway, uh, just a little bit of energy and emotion behind us. And with that, staff comes with a recommendation for the property to be designated. Let me also point out, um, since notices are not actually required for the commission meetings, I want to read for the record that this item would then move on to the commission for official adoption ordinances, which designates this property and adds it to the local register. Uh, first reading would be on March, or if you say so, um, Somewhere. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, sixth. Sixteenth. I think it's May sixteenth and June sixth. May sixteenth. This item would then be presented to the city commission on May sixteenth and June sixth for official ordinance reading and adoption. If there are any questions. Questions? It's really cute. It's a cute little house. Really pretty. I don't know who bring the joy. Anybody have no comments, no questions? Okay. Well, do I hear do I hear a motion? So I'm sorry, just a couple just quick question before I don't be back to make a motion. I support it wholeheartedly. Um, any consideration, Michael? I know we've had this conversation a couple times with the board going forward that when a homeowner proposes a designation like this that we um, leverage, and I know it would have to be in the future, having some dollars that could be used to help the homeowner uh, landscape it, improve the curb appeal, um, you know, make possible improvements to the windows, doors, things that make it more sustainable and habitable for the future, but you keep the, you know, overall integrity of the historic aspects of it. Uh, you know, like a, a, a window, a, a roof is a good one. A lot of times they, they'll put in, um, not so much on this style, with an actual frame, but sometimes on the um, uh, Mediterranean, they'll try to cheapen and not use a, a barrel tile, and they'll try to use a modern, you know, type of. So just any thoughts on, I know we don't have money in the budget now, but um, one of the desires the board has been looking for is, if not a, part-time planner, you know, somebody that would, you know, sounds like you have this and then somebody and work at Michael working this way, I think works, you know, for the time being until um, we really have fun. Yeah, Mike, Mike gave me a look because he you knows I'm doing budget stuff now, so. Um, well, no, no, I did look, interestingly, she and I spoke about the same topic, say. the same communication. We were, yeah. she was sharing some thoughts, we were talking a bit about the work plan, so with that yeah. thought of it's a very much a similar response that I, I gave earlier. I think as we develop the board's uh, work plan and desires, which we do plan on giving you an update to at the next meeting, um, these are the types of items we would like to see on there for to put it on our radar to request funding for. I will also say these types, especially funding-based requests, 
I think it is a great opportunity for um, this board to add them to the annual city commission report that we're going to do this year, because ultimately it is um, up to the city commission to allow for funding in these certain areas. Um, so we can put it on the work plan once we start that conversation, and we can also add it to the annual report as a, as a formal kind of request for funding to the city commission. But just um, maybe internally, would it be just a thought that when somebody comes with a project like this, that we encourage some other improvements to the project, not mandated, but maybe guidelines to help them before it comes to the board? Like, what is the intention in the future? It's vacant now. Is it going to stay vacant? Is it going to be improved? Is it going to stay in this condition? What are the you know, um, action steps to, to continue its preservation so that it doesn't fall in disrepair? Those type of things. Yeah, that's interesting. I can, I can look more into it. I mean, the city in, in no way can kind of force construction on private property. Um, so I'd have to look into legality and what we can request and what we can't request. I was thinking more in terms of a program that we can find for designated sites. So you get designated and then you'd be able to apply for funds through the city. Um, and then one of the criteria would be obviously furthering historical value. Um, so those were the, the ones I was thinking of. I'm, I'm not sure we could condition the ordinance on it, but there might be a way to formalize the program around that. It was just a, uh, just a guideline. Yeah. Not, yeah. not, 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 not yeah. mandated, just a guideline. Yeah. And I think you're, uh, I'm sorry, too. I think the item that you this board has added to the work plan, which is a Kenneth and Fix program, and Mr. Roberto meets you, I think you may have even suggested that initially. Because yeah. of my clerk. That is, I think that is it's very much in line with the uh, preservation initiative is and this, incentive. Is this in the CRA district? Yes. Okay, so there's two potential parts of money available. I would think the city just recently uh, did some kind of fixer up program, didn't they? They put money in that, like ARPA money in that too. Well. There is a, a small business program that was done through economic development. Um, it's the only one we This was not city one, I think. Like twenty five thousand dollars in you know, to the paints and yeah. fix roofs and change windows. Oh, I will look into it. I, 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 the, one, the one that I'm thinking of was from ARPA funds. It was done by the city through the Economic Development Department, but that targeted small businesses. So I will I will do some research and see what what is available now with the city or the CRA. Okay. As does the CRA's money are more targeting businesses kind of development than rather than single animals. That's one of their big goals. And affordability. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so we have a motion on the on the floor here, and it's so been seconded by who did, who's going to take the second? Tom, we'll let Tom take the second. He's going first. All right. All in favor? All right. All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Very good. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm the register. We're going to be on the register. We're going to ask the city commission. For the record, yes, are you abstaining? Yes. I'm not even here. I he didn't. I didn't know he he from my email. Email. Yeah, he did one of those. Thank you. So um, we should probably show up on May 16th, you guys, to uh, support this effort. Somebody besides me. Okay. Anything else? Any other new business? Okay. Excuse me. Um, this has been brought up in meetings before. I'm just trying to keep it on the radar. Uh, the person who conducted that survey in 1996 is a professor at FAU. He's in charge of the internship and public history program, Dr. Sandra Norman. She asked me just a few days ago, she has some people, students, that live in Winton Beach and would love to have an internship in the fall. So if, if there is any possibility that, that the city could use interns, um, they are available to do something related to historic preservation. It would just, and it, it, they need minimum supervision, but they need projects to do and someone to oversee it. So I know we talked about this a little bit before, it is not a paid internship, but they get college credit. So because of that, um, and, and there is assignments that are associated with it. 
I, I'm hoping that there's a way that um, the fact that it's not paid because they get college credit would compensate for that. So um, I just want to let the city know and the, and the board to know that these interns are available. They're interested in getting involved and in some kind of preservation here in Beach. Yeah, board member, my, my cards are right here on the ledge. Please do take one, share my information, <laughs> and have them contact me. I'd be, I'd be happy to review the resumes and see if we can make some more work. Right. Yeah, these, they have undergraduate and graduate students in, in history that would probably get involved. Yeah, that's great. That's a great opportunity, especially with them. <laughs> Everyone agrees? I believe we have consensus to support this idea. Yes, 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 yes. I see heads nodding everywhere. So you have solid support, Ben. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. You got it? Okay. Okay. Um, what I'm passing out here is some information on the proposed um, park. Um, I spoke to someone earlier about being able to present some ideas for historical preservation. And I'll briefly um, go over with you so that everybody else will know. Um, this proposed missionary Hope Park would be on Northeast 13th Avenue. Uh, the area has been in existence used since 1900s to 1950s. Okay, um, so I would like to have a park named after the residents' outreach on 13th Avenue to homeless, downtrodden, hungry, and homeless residents. There is a history of outreach to the spirit and body by the 13th Avenue residents. I feel that we need to make the community and the city aware why they are attracted to the area of 13th Avenue. And just briefly, uh, 12th Avenue and 13th Avenue, there are a lot of homeless people that come over there. A lot of them used to uh, sleep in front of the church of St. John. A lot of them used to frequent this particular area. It's a new park, but it doesn't have a name. Um, the proposed missionary park would be located on North 13th Avenue, and the root location was used by St. John and St. Cuthbert to baptize members in the 1900s and 1950s. And the St. John a Missionary Baptist founder was Mother Sarah Sims, who lived on 13th Avenue. Um, I have a picture of her uh, sitting on her porch <laughs> on 13th Avenue. She's the one that founded the uh, St. Cuthbert Church um, prior to its creation. Uh, they held church at her home. Um, she's commonly referred to as Mother Euterpe Thompson, and yes, that is another one of my cousins. <laughs> okay. um, she was once known as the Canal Bank Road. Uh, many people remember that in the, in the, in the uh, history information. Um, but now it's called 13th Avenue. Another person that was uh, very active on that street was Elder Paul Berry. He was of the Pentecostal Church. I believe their church is now on 14th Avenue uh, by the railroad track. Um, prior to that, it was actually on 12th. Um, the reason why I mentioned uh, Albury is because he actually had a program where he would feed the residents that were hungry. He would provide clothing for them at his home. So there is a outreach of the people in that area to needy citizens as well. A lot of the founders of the oldest churches were from this particular area. Um, another person that I mentioned was uh, Brother Murph. Uh, Brother Murph was a member of Prince Hall Masonic Lodge and lived in Boynton. Uh, he lived on 13th Avenue. His home is still standing. Um, that's the home right next to the uh, parking lot at the end of uh, 13th and the railroad track. There's a park there and then there's a parking lot. Right next to that is the Murph home. Although you look at it on the outside, it does not look like a historic home, but you look at it and inside, trust me, it was built back in the 1920s. Uh, this guy was a carpenter. Uh, everything is shellac, so it would look exactly like it did when it was put up. There is currently family members actually living in the house, uh, grandkids. Uh, but the home is still standing, and one of the significant things that he did he paved all the streets in um, Boynton Colored Town when the city would not pave them. Um, he built his mother's house. If you look on the second one, you can see her standing in front of her house. Um, that's Mrs. Murph, his, his mother. He built that house. That was on 13th Avenue. And the home that you see where the people are sitting out in front, that's him, his wife, and his son in front of that house. If you look at the uh, house, you can pretty much see it's the same house 
as it was at that time. Did you give them papers? What papers? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay. I would like to follow but, I get it. but um the um home homes are still standing, so it's a historic homes of people, even the home of Elder Albury is still standing. Um so a lot of the um a lot of the outreach from that that street ended up being churches. People who founded churches who were active in the Pentecostal church, who were very active in the Masonic Lodge and going to Peace of Life Masonic Lodge. Um, unfortunately today, uh, when people see the homeless people sitting out in front of the churches and sitting out in the park, uh, they don't understand why they're there. They don't know why these people ended up in this area, so we're just trying to get rid of them. And, and that's why I'm doing this, um, because there, there's a reason that they're there. There's a reason that that area is there. Um, the Seminole Indians, which uh, my family, we were, were Seminole, used to stop there, come up, go to 10th Avenue, and sell their wares. Uh, my family bought uh, property, um, not property, but chairs, and furniture, and stuff that they were making at the time. And at night, the same individuals would go down there and missionary to the Indian women and teach them about taking care of their children and taking care of their own health. And of course, the men didn't care. But the women were there. That's, that's how they outreach to the Seminole Indian women and children. Um, so there is a reason the downtrodden residents are in that area. But many have forgotten the community spiritual outreach by the residents and churches and the lodges they are affiliated with. So I just wanted to put this out there um, so that maybe, you know, if a letter date or however you got to do this, because this is my first time doing something like this. But um, I wanted to submit this and, and let everybody know that there's a lot more history in, the, in that part of town, but unless we present it to them and, and make them aware of it, People would just wonder why are all these poor people on 13. There's a reason. All right, let me ask you a few questions. I'm sure. gonna go first. Um, is this is a passive park that's owned by the city? Yes. If you look in there, there's a picture of the actual park. Um, it's locked. Um, right now, because they don't want the homeless people. Ah, okay. Um, oh, good. And, yeah. So it, it, yeah. it's locked 24 hours a day or, or it was locked all day today. Uh, <laughs> okay. Where, where is it? Um that's it. Okay. Right there. It's this is uh Second Street. Um this is the park, the church, St. John is right on the next street. Um well it sounds like some of these facilities need to be put on our local register. They do. Um we have to speak with them, um, but yes, de definitely the, the Murrow House is in immaculate condition inside. As far as the park, though, I mean, we can make a recommendation probably to wreck and park because it's going to be under, if it's a park. Yeah, how is that? So I would, I would have to check if it's actually a park. The I, last I remember in this parcel is actually being used by utilities for drainage and there's an easement through there. So I'm not sure if it is a park park car park. Versus an easement. Versus just an easement area for, for utilities. Um, but I, I can definitely look into that a little bit further. In the capacity, it, it depends um, where the goals are. I mean, naming and the could probably be done like in either scenario. Um, we, we can look at different options. Well, it was, it was the reason I came up with it was exactly the reason that I stated there. There was a problem with the homeless in the neighborhood, and um, they had food giveaways and everything over there. But the way that they're treating them is not the way that we used to treat them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can see how um, that would be a, an issue. Well, look at this. Is that the canal? Yes. Oh my goodness, you're right there on the line. Do you know if that park on the end has a name? I know the Palmetto Greens is the name of the water.
walkway back there, but does the actual park on the end? I mean, it's a street. I can take a look. Are you saying that it's fenced out the street? Yeah, this is it. But they they have put a fence out there since then. So this is originally how it looked. But because so many homeless people ended up there during the day because of shade. <laughs> okay. And because it's kind of out of the way, they put a fence in the back, they put a fence in the front, and, and then they put, they put a gate, and it's locked. Mm -hmm. um, so now no one can utilize it, which should not be fair. If some people are doing something that people don't like, everybody has to stop it. And that's what I feel like has happened. Since these individuals are there, they want to get rid of them, they lock it up, they move the benches. Are, are these facilities, these houses that you're talking about, they're close by to this this park? Uh, the Murph houses, they were on the same side as the park, but down a little ways. Okay. Um, and the um, the um, uh, um, Sarah Sims house, it was more closely towards you know the railroad tracks. So everything was just east. Of this park, other than the um, Albury home, which is right on the corner of 13 and 7. That's a little brown house on 13 and 7. So that was Albury home. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty much everybody else was further towards the railroad tracks, and he was like at the end at that time. You know, the road didn't go all the way to Seacrest, it went to second, and that was pretty much it. But I'm just trying to provide information and understand. Do we, do we know who put the fence up and when they did it? The city did it when they uh, did the Palmetto Greens. Oh, look at this one. They made the walkway. Okay. And this is the park all the way at the end. Yeah. Okay. And this is just this. for reference is June right. 2022. So in June 2022, the fence was not there. So it's right. been put there within the last year. Right. Okay. So are, to get there, you must go industrial to get there? Well, this is, this is a different park. This is the one that's all the way by the railroad track. And, and but when you say the city put it up, that's a very large term. Who in the city put it up? And who decided to put it there? It, it's something oh, okay. to do with the police and the parks and trying to keep the area free of undesirable. Okay. So, so it's, it's, it's real recent since they put the fence up, um, but they've been trying to get rid of those individuals for a while. So that may be why they did it and it worked. Victor, when you say um, these people are undesirables, do the people in that neighborhood think of them as undesirables? No, I'm saying that the city is referring to them as undesirables because they don't want them there. So yes, in a sense, if you have homeless people sitting out on a bench in front of your house Night, that's undesirable. <laughs> okay. Do you think the neighbors are complaining about that? Uh, what I'm trying to address is the park. Um, the, the, the issue is they close the park because they don't want the people there, but they don't understand why the people are there. They just want it gone. So I'm trying to give some information, even to the residents, when I asked them the, who was uh, Sarah Sims, who's oh, lady in the park where she lived? Down the street. <laughs> okay, so they don't, no one really understands, you know, the history of that area at all, even the people on the street are all here. So at this point, we don't really know if it's... We don't know if it's... Uh, it's you know, we don't know if it's in the East Metro. Yeah. yeah, what I, what I can do is for our next meeting, I will at least get the history on it, um, how long we owned it, if it's an easement, if it's a park, why the fence was put up. Um, I want to see that return. My kind of overall assumption is that there were complaints. Police will public works, public works suggested we put a fence. Um, and, and so and those are the facts. I, I, will, I will bring those forward. There were complaints because that's how I got involved. Um, there was a young lady that lived across the street. And she was complaining that six, seven, eight homeless people are sitting out in front of her house all night until the morning, and then when it gets hot, they go to the park. So yes, there were complaints. Um, I'm not trying to address that. 
I'm trying to address the information in the park. So whatever the city wants to do, that's that's up to them. Well, I would not object to trying to assist in naming the agent if the city would let us. Right. That, that's all I'm trying to do is provide information. Because I would, be, there. I would be a little oh, concerned yeah. about you know the homeless people. I know that there's something that <laughs> should be done to help them, but I'm not too certain if the neighbors are not happy about having them there that you know we can't. What can we do to help that problem? That's another big problem. Well, also, you're going to close a park because some people are not what you want in the park or you misuse it. You clean it up. You know, it's like closing down the street because some people are standing on the corner. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. uh, a couple thoughts. Um, first, I, I, you know, in looking and reviewing the city's uh, master plan, and there's some documents that are uh, on the city's website regarding to what the city has as they've ideas. as parks. This isn't on there. I, I think this is either a utility easement or a right of way of, of some type. And then over the years, it became an area that the local residents used, so the walkway was put in there for ease of use. But then what happens with these unapproved right of ways, alleyways? Um, people in government, those of us, either elected officials or the city staff, have to deal with exactly the word term you use, the undesirables. And so then it becomes a quality of life issue for those residents in the community, as well as a burden for the city to maintain trash, beer bottles, uh, dumping of illegal, all this, these things happen when you have this type of unimproved right away or easement that's not designated a park just becomes a local area, you know, in the neighborhood. Some of those can be turned into pocket parks, some of them can, uh, but I think it really starts with the, the city reviewing it to determine, um, but currently it's not on any of the park systems, but might be one of, as Amanda mentioned, maybe a right away or, or a, a, an easement of some type that's there for either utility purposes or whatever it may be, but it really starts with, we need to have to start Policy can start with the city on whether. So right now I don't know, so that's why I brought it. Whatever, yeah, it whatever is, comes up, we'll deal with. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm happy that you brought it up because you know that's that's a historic story that you told us that you know yeah. of historic like homes like, and historic yeah. people and things that happened in in that neighborhood that um, were important to that neighborhood. Yes. So no, it's good that you brought it forward. Well, I'm sure Amanda's going to do. Hope and find out what she can find out. Due diligence. I will. <laughs> so that was it. That's all. Interesting. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, no, that's very right. cool. Thank you. Any more questions for Victor? Anything? All right. Anybody else have any other little tidbits to share? Okay. Well, then I have one. <laughs> uh, coming up uh, on April the 27th is the next White Beach Historical Society program. This program is going to be about Key West hand-printed fabrics. Um, the woman that's going to talk to us about hand-printed fabrics is an expert on Lily Pulitzer. So bring your Lily Pulitzer questions. We do all of our programs uh, via Zoom, and they're free to the public. Anyone can attend. Okay. Questions, comments, done? Okay. If there are no objections, we stand adjourned. Seeing no objections, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, right. Thank you too. Thank you. You're like, we're going to make some progress.